On Tuesday morning, it was announced that all charges have been dropped against the now disgraced actor, actor both on television and during hate crimes, Jesse Small. And this is an absolutely pathetic decision on the part of our institutions that are, in theory, supposed to act justly. So we'll explain why, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. I did a video covering the specifics of this case and why it happened in the first place not too long ago, so I will put a link to that in the description. But now it turns out that Jesse Smollett will walk. The state attorney's office dismissed the charges. His record will be wiped clean. What, like with a cloth or something? Well, no. He doesn't have to worry about the 16 felonies that he was charged with anymore. All he has to worry about is his two days of community service and that, that $10,000 bail payment that will not be reimbursed. Boo-hoo. I mean, he gets only 20000 per episode of Empire, but uh, I think he'll be okay in the long run. And I don't know, he avoided prison, so that's pretty cool. But to be fair, this isn't officially over. There could be a federal investigation. There could be lawsuits. But here's the problem. The record states that this guy was let off because he just did too much good. He does so much to help the community. Like, okay, but the problem with that is that this guy literally tried to start a race war. This guy staged an attack to further divide the country, to exacerbate tensions between white Americans and black Americans, tensions between Trump supporters and members of the hashtag resistance. And some people have the take of, oh, talk about privilege. This is black privilege at its finest. And that's not correct. The reason that he's getting away with this is not because he's black. Do you think if, if uh, CJ Pearson did this? Do you think he'd walk away? Do you think if the Hodge twins did this, they would walk away? No. So uh, it's not that he's black. It's that he's a leftist advocate that's helping to perpetuate the narrative that has poisoned our country. That's what this is about. A black, openly gay guy gets jumped by two white Trump supporters. That's a wet dream for the media. Turns out to be false. Do you really think they're going to throw one of their own under the bus like that? I don't think so. And the Chicago Police Department is absolutely irate, rightfully so. And a retired police chief from the area even came out and said that their department has long been corrupted by politics. So here's the trail. Two weeks ago, it was reported that Tina Chen, who we'll talk about in just a second, inserted herself into this investigation by texting the Cook County State Attorney Kim Fox only three days after the incident is said to have occurred, saying that on behalf of the Smollett family, who she knows, she would like to express her deepest concerns. She suggested that Fox push the Chicago Police Superintendent, Eddie Johnson, and Fox texted back saying that she did. Uh, Tina Chen served as an assistant to President Obama and as chief of staff to Michelle Obama, as well as executive director to the White House Council on Women and Girls. She's made appearances with Jussie Smollett's sister, whose name is, I believe, Journey Smollett Bell, on a few occasions, such as in March of 2018 at South by Southwest in Austin. Uh, Journey and another sister, Jazz Smollett Warwell, worked for both Obama presidential campaigns, and visitor logs from the White House actually show that Journey paid at least one visit to the president and first lady in 2013, during the time period in which Tina Chen was serving as a top strategist to both the president and the first lady. Chen also shoveled more than $200,000 into Obama's campaign in 2008 and coordinated Hollywood celebrities to promote Obama's domestic policy agenda through the taxpayer-subsidized National Endowment for the Arts. Given this, given that Journey and Chen are pals, that Chen and the Obamas are pals, and that Michelle Obama and Jussie are pals, I mean, she hosted him at a musical event in the White House in 2016 and then danced with him on stage at a college signing day event in 2018, you have to wonder, is there something fishy going on? Are we being told the truth by our institutions? Are powerful people using their power to promote their agenda? I mean, how do you go from a grand jury indictment to dropped charges in a matter of weeks? The police even said they had enough to convict him. They had text messages, phone records, statements from the two brothers, ride sharing records, security camera footage, and then they were gonna go ahead and just seal all the records of the case. This is so poorly written, like they're not even trying anymore. But then a Freedom of Information Act uh, did go through, so they released some of the records, though they were heavily edited versions that were resubmitted to the Chicago Police Department after the Cook County State Attorney went ahead and dropped all the charges against our little angel Smollett, St. Smollett. But uh, virtually everyone in the legal community acknowledges that this case has been handled very strangely. And I'm hoping that we have enough integrity and enough institutions to finally have some justice served because that is not what we have right now. To quote James Baldwin, it is certain in any case that ignorance allied with power is the most ferocious enemy justice can have. Jesse Smollett is the ignorance. He believes he's a victim. And in order to plague society with his worldview, he stages an attack on himself. It would seem that he's also allied with power, which of course explains why, according to James Baldwin, justice is not being served here. And since, at least according to Alexander Hamilton, the first duty of a society is is justice. We can reasonably conclude from this that the largest threat to the fabric of our society is powerful people with malicious agendas that will happily exploit the ignorance and willing to carry out their agenda for them and then assist them when they are caught because good people acted on behalf of their principles and their allegiance to liberty and justice for all. It's pathetic.
Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave it a comment right away to help me compete in this algorithm, please and thank you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You're going to want to be subscribed because we have big things coming up. We have a live stream debate against a Marxist that picked a fight with me on Twitter coming up pretty soon. Uh, we have protest footage coming up. As you're watching this, probably, I'm actually at the protest, uh, the Trump protest, where people will be hashtag resisting. So that should be fun. But thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.